On September 4, 1993, New York Yankees pitcher Jim Abbott pitched a no-hitter. What made this not just a special baseball moment, but an inspiring human interest story, was that Jim Abbott was born with just one hand. A tremendous story that's bigger than baseball. However, Abbott may have never been able to have this amazing moment and remarkable achievement without a heroic pioneer who came before him, Pete Gray, the first ever Major League Baseball player with just one arm. Hello gamers and welcome back to SRS. My name is Fico, and if you follow me at twitch.tv forward slash large meso, I will in fact love you forever. Look at this dude. I also have my own YouTube and Twitter, so if you like this video and want to check those out, I'd really appreciate it. Also, before we go any further, I do have to mention that only 30% of you watching are actually subscribed, so if you like this video, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. We also have merch now, so if you see anything on screen you like, go down to the description and we'll get you set up there. Anyways, let's get right into it. As per usual in a story, we need to start from the beginning. Bear with us here while we set the stage, because this one's a bit wild. Born Peter J. Weisner, Pete was born in Pennsylvania on March 6, 1915. At about seven or eight years old, Pete was involved in a wagon accident that left his right arm mangled, forcing doctors to amputate it above the elbow. No one actually knows exactly what happened in the accident, though. One story that's been told is that Peter was sitting on the wagon with some of his friends when he fell off. His arm got stuck in the wagon spokes, and I think you get the picture. After the accident, the man whose wagon they were riding dropped Pete off in front of his family's porch and just straight ran away. You know, as one does. But ever since the accident, one thing Pete never wanted people to do was give him sympathy or treat him any different than anyone else. A story he once told about playing on the sand lot as a kid represents this pretty well. Pete plowed over the catcher while sliding into home plate. The catcher, understandably, got pretty mad about this and basically told Pete that he would punch him if only he had two arms. Pete responded, go ahead and try. That's some Wolverine energy right there. Did you just call me... Blob? Against all odds, Pete became a good enough hitter to start playing semi-pro ball once he reached adulthood. He bounced around a bunch of semi-pro and minor league teams and did experience some success there. In 1944, he won a Major League Player of the Year award at a now defunct league two levels below MLB. But as you may know, around this time, there was a little thing going on called World War II. You may have heard of it before. Hank Hill's dad got his shins blown off in it. Fire and blew my shins off. And if you ever played Call of Duty, there's a 50-50 shot that it had something to do with this. Many of baseball's best players went off to serve in the war. Legends like Ted Williams, Joe DiMaggio, and Ben Feller lost prime years of their careers to service. Pete Gray, however, did not serve in the war. The US military rejected him on account of being an amputee. Unfortunately or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, he was never given the chance to serve. So, with the origin story set, I think it's about time we get into what you're really here for. His time as a one-armed Major League Baseball player. As World War II raged on, a huge portion of men in the United States had either signed up for the military or been drafted, and big league players were no different. Due to this, baseball teams started to consider players they typically wouldn't sign. The Reds literally had a 15-year-old kid pitch during wartime and had him face the team that would win the World Series that year. They were just looking for anyone that had some ability, and I was a big kid, about six foot two, and weighed approximately 190 pounds, so I could throw hard. He was also only 14 years old. And in 1945, the previous year's AL champions, the St. Louis Browns, purchased the contract of the 1944 Southern Association's Player of the Year, our man, Pete Gray. By now, you're probably wondering exactly how being a one-armed outfielder worked, so let's bust out some film, shall we? Oh yeah, there's film of this. On the field, Pete would catch the ball with his glove just like any other player would. After this, he did what no other player would do. He found a way to roll the ball across his chest from left to right, and during this, he would rest his glove underneath his right stump, and the ball would roll into his left hand in one motion. Talk about impressive body control. With that being said, there's still the big question that remains. Was he any good? And to that, the answer is... maybe? Not really? Somewhat? I don't really know. His batting average was low, his on-base percentage was low, his slugging percentage was basically non-existent, and his war no pun intended, was negative. With a 47 OPS plus, Pete was as good a hitter relative to his competition as 2018 Max Scherzer. Yikes. But at the end of the day, I mean, the guy's still missing an arm. And honestly, hitting a 218 in the majors with just one arm is incredible. 
Getting 51 hits with 8 of them for extra bases on bat strength and the speed of just one arm is unfathomable in today's game and just makes for an unreal achievement when you put it in perspective. He also once went 7 for 7 in a doubleheader according to baseball reference. Plus, walking more than you strike out is still a strong trait for any hitter no matter who you are. And this batting average was still higher than 2020 Gary Sanchez, who is undeniably good at baseball. Just look at what he's been up to this offseason. Batazo alto y largo profundo por el left field, atrás la bola. So, while most analytics will tell you that Pete Gray was far from a productive player, we still have to put it in perspective a bit. In a way, it's like beat baseball. Beat baseball is a modified version of the game for blind, and the things you see on field start to be a little more impressive. That's not to be condescending or insulting, the exact opposite actually. But in this case, Pete was playing against actual Major League Baseball players, and some Hall of Famers even. However, one thing that he really struggled with at the plate was breaking balls. This was due to the fact that he didn't have a second hand to check his own swing once he started it. And once pitchers started to realize this, they would pepper him with curveballs about as often as Reddit messes up their investigations, quote unquote. Just non-stop, over and over and over again for the rest of his big league career, which ended after that 1945 season. Pete didn't have the best relationship with his teammates either. For one, they felt that a one-armed outfielder was a major hindrance on their way to repeat as American League champions, which they failed to do despite being a respectable 81 and 70. Not only that, but they also knew that a huge reason he was on the team in the first place was just to sell tickets. And before you ask, no, the owner of the Browns that signed Pete was not the same owner of the Browns that signed the three foot seven guy six years later. Pete was treated as a spectacle rather than a player. Gray didn't seem to mind it too much though, and he was even later quoted saying, if they insulted me, I didn't pay any attention. I mostly kept to myself. That's why I got the reputation of being so tough to get along with, but I've mellowed. World War II officially ended in September of 1945, meaning all the stars who went off to war were all back for 1946. With this, competed with Pete's less than stellar status, the Browns didn't need him anymore. Pete played in the minors for a few seasons, but that was it. Pete passed away in 2002, but his legacy still lives on. There have been one-armed or one-handed players following him in the years since 1945. Without Pete as the trailblazer, this might not have even been possible. And I personally think that's quite respectable. Godspeed, Pete. Well, thank you all for watching. Those of you who stuck out to the end with us, that's all for this video. And if you did manage to make it all the way to the end, go ahead and comment the one-armed wonder down in the comments. Anyways, thanks for all the support as always. We really do appreciate it. And um, that's about it. See ya.